everybody welcome back to cryptid tales my name is amber beckrood and today we are going to be talking about something that if you tuned in on the sor roundtable last weekend you would have gotten a little bit of a hint about what today's episode is so one of my favorite stories always has been and always will be the Sasquatch. Now everybody knows who Sasquatch is, everybody knows that they're around, they've heard the stories, we've talked about it forever. Sasquatch is seen all over the US, all over Canada, and we have many different kinds all over the world as well. So not only do you have our Sasquatch, we know of the Yeti, we know of the Skunk Ape, and all of those different creatures, but one that stands out to me is the Chinese wild man. Now, I know what you're thinking. Yes, it is just another version of the Sasquatch, but it is very specific to a small section of China. So small, in fact, that in the years, there have only been about 400 sightings since 1920. Now, same thing as every Sasquatch story ever. It is a big bipedal, hairy man-like creature that wanders around the forest and lives in a cave. What makes the Chinese wild man so different and so interesting is that it has the ability to cry and show pain. Now I've only heard this about certain Sasquatch stories so whether it's actually something that every single one of those creatures feels or not is yet to be said. But every single story about the Chinese wild man all say the same thing, that they can show pain. Now, one of the biggest things and how many sightings have been seen is that it's not just by random people. These sightings have been had by locals, they've been had by government officials, park rangers, and pretty much everybody. So what really makes the Chinese wild man the Chinese wild man? Is it that it is just somebody that's deformed living out in the countryside because that's how they get away from the rest of the world? Or is it actually some creature that we just don't know about? Whatever it is, I'm sure that everybody wants to know. I mean, wouldn't you? Certain stories that have been passed down about this creature since the late 1920s have all varied, whether it's just seeing them from afar, seeing them up close, or even catching one. Now, one of the stories that has come from the late 80s is that somebody actually caught a young one in a trap and upon going to get it out of the trap, they noticed that its eyes were filling up with tears and they let it go. So obviously they can have emotion. They have some form of a brain, I guess, aside from just being an animal that walks around and does nothing all day. So I think that's something that we really need to take into consideration when we look back at the Sasquatch stories that we listen to or the encounters that you may have as a person. Now, this Chinese wild man, although hasn't been sighted recently, has had lots of interest peaked from everywhere all over the world, including at one point the Chinese government sending out a team to go and try and find this Sasquatch. Of course, it is, like I said, subject to one area. They have actual markings on the sides of caves where they believe that this Chinese wild man lives, or they live, depending on how many there are. And they do advise you to keep an eye out and watch where you are and what you're doing and where you're going at certain times of day in the park. Now, of course, I would love to have my own experience with a Sasquatch just to say that I have had one and that I have seen this mythical creature, but I don't think I'm going to be getting to China anytime soon to experience the Chinese wild man. I want to know what you guys think. Do you think that the Chinese wild man is just another subsect of the species of Sasquatch? Do you think it is just somebody who has a medical condition that is growing an excess of hair? Or is it nothing altogether? 
whatever you guys think I want to know down below in the comments I am reading every single one of them so please please do let me know what you think of course like always you can catch me here every two weeks on Tuesdays with another episode of Cryptid Tales, bringing you the weird and wacky around the world. I would also like to say a huge thank you to Ron Bumblefoot Thal for all of the music for Spaced Out Radio. We thank you so much, and I hope you guys all love the music as much as I do. You can check out my social media and SOR social media in these links here on the side. And as always, you can tune in to Spaced Out Radio every single night at 9 p.m. Pacific and listen to what everybody has to say. Dave Scott has a huge, huge repertoire of tons of people that he goes through every single month talking about the weird, wild, and spooky and if you're a little bit strange, you've come to the right place. Let me know what you want to see in future episodes of Cryptid Tales down below in the comment box. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button on this channel and turn on the notification bells because there's a new episode of the radio show every single night. And like I said, my own every two Tuesdays. That is it for me. Please don't forget to go over and show my channel some love as well. I have a lot of big and exciting things coming very soon in the future. And if you want to keep up with not just my cryptid tales, but my own projects as well, I would gladly, gladly appreciate it. That is it for me. And I will see you guys in the next episode.